what does the perfect strength workout for runners actually look like? According to research, it's one that improves running economy, reduces injury risk, and boosts performance all without interfering with your running. My name is Nicholas. I have a bachelor's degree in sports science. I'm a certified physiotherapist and I'm a former professional triathlete. And in this video, I'm going to show you the most important muscles to train if you want to run faster for longer, how to train them, and exactly how to put strength training in your weekly schedule so you avoid the interference effect and stop wasting your time. Now, before diving into the specific exercises and the specific muscles, we need to clarify a few things. First of all, no matter how much I I wish it was true, there is no single perfect workout for everyone. Your experience level, goals and preferences all play a role. But if your goal is to become a faster endurance runner, I went through the research to see what the science says is the best muscles to train and how to train them. I did this to get as close to the perfect workout protocol as possible. And as I looked deeper, I realized something surprising. The question, what muscles should runners train, is trickier than it seems. Let me explain. Running is essentially a series of controlled single leg hops. Every step you're storing and releasing energy through your muscles and your tendons. And the more efficient your body does that, the less energy you waste. So running performance isn't just about how strong, how big your muscles are. It's about how efficiently they produce force. And most runners get strength training completely wrong. They either lift too light to make a difference or they train like bodybuilders, building muscle that doesn't really help them run faster. The quote unquote perfect workout avoids both extremes. It is designed to make you a better runner and not just a stronger one. So the real question isn't how do I get stronger? It's how do I make my muscles more efficient for running? Because of this, when we're testing to see if strength training makes you a better runner, we use running economy as a measurement instead of maximal strength. Running economy meaning the energy cost to run at a given pace. So what muscles should we train to run faster for longer? And perhaps more importantly, how? Well, according to a scientific review from 2022, the evidence consistently shows that heavy strength training of the lower limbs is effective for improving running economy. But there is something that is even better. They found that combining strength training with plyometric drills is the most effective and most recommended approach for runners. This combination of heavy strength training and plyometric power is probably the closest we can come to a perfect protocol for runners. But I do wanna say that for beginners and actually most people, we are not built to do heavy strength training and plyometrics all the time. So it's great to have a period of time where you just focus on mini reps and technique just to get your muscles and your tendons and your nervous system ready ready for the harder work later on. So we know we need to do some heavy strength training and some plyometrics to run faster for longer, but what muscles should we train? According to the review, we should train all major lower limb muscle groups if we have no specific deficits. When I read that, I was like, okay, but what specific muscles or exercises should I focus on then? The research consistently points to three main areas, the glutes, the calves, and the hamstrings. These are the engines that drive your stride, store energy, and return it efficiently with every step. On top of that, training our hip flexors and hip abductors and adductors helps keep us stable. Now, before I show you how to do this in practice, I think it's important to address the elephant in the room. Because what about upper body strength and core training? Does that actually make a difference for endurance runners? Well, here's what the science says. There are several reviews looking specifically at core training and endurance performance. They all found that core training does improve trunk strength, balance, and stability, basically helping you maintain better posture and control as you fatigue. But when it comes to pure performance, things like running economy or race times, the effects are much smaller and sometimes inconsistent. So in simple terms, core training on its own won't make you run dramatically faster, but it can help you hold your form longer, especially in the later parts of a race where most runners break down. And anecdotally, I've seen many runners use core training to help them stay injury free. That's why I treat core training as a support system, not the primary driver of performance. It won't replace strength training for your legs, but it will help you stay connected and efficient as fatigue kicks in. So what about upper body strength? Most runners don't think about it at all. After all, your arms don't touch the ground, right? But here's the thing, your upper body helps you run tall, maintain rhythm, 
and control rotation. Now, there aren't many studies showing that if you build a huge chest and a great bench press, you'll run faster. And you probably won't. But a scientific review from 2024 looked at how upper body and core strength affect high intensity running and jumping performance. It found that stronger arms and trunk muscles were possibly linked to better sprinting and jumping. But there weren't many studies that actually tested it in training. So while it won't increase your running performance the same way that leg strength does, it can help you stay stable and controlled, especially late in races when your form starts to collapse. In other words, treat your upper body strength training the same way as you treat your core training. It's not the main driver of performance, but it's an important puzzle piece that helps you stay efficient when it matters most. And if your goal is not to run elite times, then in general, having more muscle and more strength is never a bad idea. So how do we put all of this knowledge together into a strength training protocol that we can actually follow? To bring this together in a way that actually works in real life, I use a three-step framework that I call PSI, which stands for Power, Strength and Injury Prevention. It's built directly from the research that we just covered and through training with dozens of runners over the years, and it's, in my opinion, the most optimal way to strength train for runners. It consists of three phases that align with normal running phases. A base phase, a build phase and a peak phase. Each phase has a specific goal and each phase is built upon the last. If you get the order wrong, you're leaving performance gains on the table, or worse, you burn out right before your peak. So let's break it down. The base phase is where you create the engine and structural resilience your body needs to handle harder training later. The goal here isn't to lift as heavy as possible, it's to build stability, coordination, work on your form and your technique, and to build strength endurance. The focus is on injury prevention and movement quality. We do things like high rep calf races to bulletproof your Achilles, single leg glute bridges and step ups for stability, or controlled tempo squats and lunges to improve balance and control. This phase is also where we build tendon tolerance, basically teaching your muscles and connective tissue to store and release energy efficiently. Think of it like upgrading the suspension in a car before increasing its horsepowers. Without it, you'll go fast once before something breaks. We usually stay in this phase for around four to six weeks, sometimes longer, training two to three times per week with moderate loads, focusing on perfect form and range of motion. Once you've built the foundation, it's time to go strong. Now we move from endurance style lifting to heavy compound movements. Things like squats, deadlifts, hip thrusts, and split squats. This is where you'll teach your body to produce more energy with each step. Because remember, running economy is about how efficient efficiently you can generate that force. In practical terms, you'll be able to run the same pace with less effort. This phase usually lasts another four to six weeks, sometimes more, with two to three sessions per week focused on quality, full recovery between sets and progressive overload. Now that you've built strength, it's time to convert that strength into power. Power is the ability to produce force quickly. It's basically a measurement of how strong you are and how fast you can move that weight. Now we reduce the heavy lifting and do explosive movements. Things like jump squats, box jumps, bounce and hops, and Olympic lift variations like power cleans. This phase bridges the gap between the gym and the track, training your nervous system to recruit those strong muscles faster and more efficiently. The goal isn't to get tired, it's that neuromuscular efficiency. Each rep should feel fast, snappy, and precise. We stay in this phase for four to six weeks, training two times per week with focus on quality, explosive movements. By the end of these three phases, you'll have a stronger, more resilient body, a more powerful stride, and a faster, more efficient running form. And the best part is you can repeat this cycle with every single training block, getting a little stronger, a bit faster, and a bit more durable with each and every cycle. But to make sure we don't ruin our gains in the gym and our running performance, we have to be very strategic about it. You've probably heard that mixing strength and running can mess up your results. In science, it's called the interference effect. And for years, people have debated whether lifting 
and running cancel each other out. But a scientific review from 2024 looked at all the evidence to try to come up with an answer. And here's what they found. First, the interference effect is real. But it's not as simple as running kills your gains. It mostly depends on how you combine the two. According to the review, here's what matters most. First off is your training status. The fitter you are, the more carefully you need to plan. Beginners can often mix strength and endurance and still get great results. But the better you become, the harder it is to improve at both things at once. Second, doing endurance training every day or going long and slow all the time tends to increase the interference. So if your goal is to maximize strength, then keeping your running sessions to about two per week while focusing the rest on quality strength work seems to minimize the interference. But if your goal is to run faster, then we must accept a small interference. Remember, there is still an effect. It's just not as much as if you only did strength training. Third, high intensity endurance work creates a ton of fatigue, which can blunt your strength gains if it's too close to your gym sessions. So don't do hard intervals right before you go to the gym. Fourth, if you do both on the same day, the order matters. Doing strength before endurance helps preserve your ability to build muscle and power. Do it the other way around and you're more likely to lift less and recover worse. But if you separate them by several hours or even better by a full day, the problem almost disappears. Fifth, the review suggests leaving at least three to six hours between each session if you train them both on the same day. And if your sessions are long or intense, giving yourself at least 24 hours is even better. Next, getting enough protein supports recovery and minimizes the interference. And so does simply eating enough overall. Because energy deficits are one of the biggest reasons progress stalls when you're trying to combine strength and running. And finally, individual differences. Everyone responds differently. Things like age, gender, genetics, and recovery capacity all affect how much interference you'll experience. Which is why some runners thrive on combining the two and some burn out very quickly. And also the ability to recover itself is trainable. So you can get better at doing both at the same time. So the takeaway is this. You can build endurance and strength at the same time. It can actually be a synergetic effect where you get better at both, but you just have to be strategic about it. Plan your week so heavy lifts and hard runs don't fight each other. Give yourself enough recovery. Because done right, concurrent training doesn't cause interference. It actually makes you run faster. So what is the quote unquote perfect strength protocol for runners? Here's the formula that science points to and what I'd say is the perfect protocol if you want to run faster. Heavy lower body strength work and explosive plyometrics to improve running economy. Strategic recovery and session timing to avoid interference. And core and upper body support work to hold perfect form when fatigue sets in. But if you don't plan your running sessions as strategically as you do your lifting, you're still leaving performance gains on the table. So to learn the smartest way to structure your runs using science, you should watch this video next.